And so we're uh, we're trying to make sure before we officially start the meeting that we've got everything in place. We have live video, it looks like. A scoreboard that is how they refer to it and it basically allows the audience to see what's happening on either side of the screens so they can actually understand where we are in the board meeting and it'll also show in front of the individual board members so we're just getting that in place did you have to do this No, because we're we see whatever those are. Can you just log into it at that site? Sounds good. Yes. And then it should then it will be in front of us. call our Citrus County School Board special meeting and workshop to order for August 27th um, before I turn it over for our uh, opening exercises and Pledge of Allegiance if we um, can ask that everyone bear with us we're going to try and go a little <coughs> slower than we ordinarily would because we are transitioning to uh, board docs which will allow us some efficiency and uh, time saving and the board back here is saying not for us <laughs> but I'm, I'm very proud um, and our board is very brave to do this this is a very common um, product that's used by school boards around the state and nation it's going to allow us a lot of options and opportunities um, expanded and with that, I'm going to turn this over to the Honorable Linda Powers. Okay. Thank you. Let's stand up for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God. Indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Ms. Powers. <coughs> and I'm just going to need to. For those uh, board members, you may want to go back to your feature, where it says Featured at the top of the screen, and then log back into where it's Meetings. So I'll give you minutes for that to happen. Yeah, that's okay. It's at the top, top middle of the, oh, the screen. Oh, okay. Click yeah. Featured, and then click um, Meetings for today's board meeting. When you do it, that'll give you an option to say join the meeting. And we can join the meeting. Where is that? <laughs> if you yeah, click on that button there. And then click on the that part that. Yeah. 
So the reason we're doing this is because when the board members join, it allows us to have a digital vote. And as we are board members, as we're learning that, it will actually record our votes and begin instantly building the minutes uh, so that they'll actually be at the end of the meeting some interim minutes that will already be done and uh, save staff. When, when we, I'll show you when we come to it. We're going to. Uh, There'll be a section here um, coming up. She, I think she unlocks our votes. I will. Um, yeah, we'll go through that. We are going to go to our first vote, which is going to be item 3A, adoption of agenda as recommended by the superintendent. I have no changes or recommendations of changes on my desk, so if somebody wants to entertain a motion. Second. The motion by Ms. Powers, a second by Mr. Dodd, to adopt the agenda as recommended by the superintendent. Um, Lisa, will you unlock the votes? And then if we would say yes um, to vote. Have all of us voted? Can you show registered all of us have voted? Congratulations, Ford. It passes 5-0, and we have done our first electronic voting. We'll move on to citizens' comments. Are there any green cards? No, <laughs> no hanging chats. That's good, Mr. Bradshaw. We'll move on to educational services to uh, Ingenuity course and virtual instruction. Good morning, Mr. Dr. Good Hewitt. morning. I'm bringing my whole notice all on here. That's a big package. I'm very excited. And I want to thank you. You have done so much work and support behind the scenes to get us to today. And I know you have encouraged us and ha are trying to uh, to help the workloads of all of our district with this particular improvement. It's a team effort, Ms. Adele, Ms. Androsky, so it's a team effort of working towards us, so thank you. Um, I come to the board asking for um, approval of the Ingenuity Course and Virtual Instruction Service Agreement. Board members? I'm going to approve. Second. I have a motion by Ms. Bryant, second by Ms. Powers, to approve the Ingenuity Course and Virtual Instruction Service Agreement. Any comments or questions? There being none, could you unlock the votes? Is everyone voted? Yes. And can you read the votes? Because it's not coming on my screen to show that. So, Mr. Kennedy, I take it that we're not going to do a verbal vote. Then? That's. I think. I think we should still do the verbal vote. Um, I think that's we're doing that because I think and because I still have to call it and without having and I need to I still have to be able to state the vote. So in this case, um, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Vote passes five to zero. And then we can we'll still and then we'll still do this, but right. But then if you're watching on television and, and don't have a computer, and we still have to announce the votes by by procedure. Um, so. Moving on to instructional and support recommendations.
Good morning. I ask the board's approval of the instructional and support recommendations as listed on the goldenrod. Approval of the instructional and support recommendations as outlined on the goldenrod. Second. I have a motion by Ms. Counts, a second by Ms. Bryan to approve instructional and support recommendations. Any questions or comments? Nice long list of appointments. <laughs> So we had two actually move from support to instructional that resigned their support position and moved into teaching positions. No. I'm assuming we're still going to have the golden rod as a physical piece of paper because it changes. Yes, it will be up because it's updated right up until our vote usually. Yes. yes. So they'll they're saying yes. And then will the document that's on the agenda that it may not match this final document? Same as no, same as it, it's been. You know, the, that only is when it's recorded a week, seven days before. So the golden rod. That's why they it's updated on ours with the asterisks because the golden you rod on your agenda it says white copy on it. When you look at yeah. it, the right. one says white copy. We update it until the the afternoon before the board meeting. So how will someone who wants to click on that and see it after the meeting, it will be updated then on here after the vote? I, I thought we updated it, Lisa. Do we update the golden rod when Fran brings it to you the day before or the morning of? It still says white rod on the computer. Engine. Right, as it did on the original, even when we had a, um, well, it didn't say white rod, but it was in the original, when we were paper, it was always that white rod and then we just hand out the golden rods and that's what um i mean i can go in and change it yeah you, it needs yeah, to be the to. official well the, the question i would have for legal though is are we able to add and change supplemental information mr bradshaw on the agenda after the seven day within that seven day period before the meeting from the time it's it's least released well, so like this, the original one is put on there, uploaded, say, seven days, and then throughout the week there's an update. Can that be updated? As long and, as it says updated next but week. The agenda, but the agenda items we cannot at that point, other than for good cause, add right. any items on there. Right. So other than that, we, we're we thinking. So that would, is that the answer? Is that yes, just, yeah. They can update it on here, so what we're voting on on this is the same as it matches this. Right. Lisa, you can update it to the golden rod before the meeting I on the can. computer. That's what we should think of. And Mr. Um, Dodd, the other thing too is like items like they'll be presented today can also be added after the fact too. So if there's a presentation that's not ready until the workshop, that can be added. That's part of the thing I'm excited about that we'll be able to provide that's not been always as easy to provide with the public. Um, that the staff can just kind of go and fill those packs. Our suggestion is going to be that when we do the white rod, um, instead of saying that, just to say this document will be updated in the 24 hour. Okay, and then she can put the final one. Correct. And that way, when someone's looking at that, they know that this isn't the final draft until 24 hours. This is structured. That's excellent. But at the time of the meeting, it was. Correct. Yes. Okay. Uh, hold on one second. Ms. Powers. It does, but you can, we can ask her. I believe you can re-release her vote. I can remove her vote. You can. She can remove yes. it to do it again. And now, I, what I was just thinking about if I voted on something that, not this, but something uh, else. Oh yes. Then could everyone see how I voted? And that yes, and I think that, that so the question on that I think procedurally is we shouldn't unlock the vote until the chair calls for the vote. Online voting. Mm -hmm. So that we so that we don't so we avoid that very issue um, because it inadvertently you could have that conversation going on. The vote's not been called for, but it was you know I would I'm I'm a box clicker, so I, I would have done that as well. So with this. Is there any other questions or comments? This is good stuff, by the way.
put a niche in the 40 openings that we had last We year? have 37. We currently have 37 instructional openings and 18 support openings. Are all these people here? Yes. We still had a few resignations. Yes. And I think, if correct me if I'm wrong, that we have approximately 10 individuals in the pair of uh, pair to teach. That is correct. We have 10 this time. And Brendan, do you know? Three. We have three so far starting in the fall. So if we took 10 away from, say, 37, we're down to roughly 27. We could get 10 each semester, 20 a year. That would be excellent. And that is remarkable. That is Absolutely. just truly remarkable. We have several, Brendan and I have been going out to the schools, and we have several that do not have their AA degrees that have taken the para protest. And so they are going to start through with CF, we're working with CF for them to start the, to get their AA degrees and work through that. Board members, there's an article that I'll um, share with Ms. Adele to share out with you all having to do with um, other districts that are challenged just as we are at finding teachers. Um, we are on par with them, but let me tell you who we're on par with, St. John's County. I mean, St. John's County, they're, you know, it's interesting, their average salary right now is 46,000. Citrus County's average on the state's DOE report is 47,000. Wow. So it, it, that's, a, that's the only state report is on average salaries, which is it, this is also reflective of the age of your teachers. So that's why Citrus tends to be a little higher on that list because we have more mature teachers, professionally mature teachers. <laughs> Mr. Dodd. So I, I noticed uh, Daniel Koch is on here twice, obviously. He was taking a, a reappointment, but then he's also. Uh, yes, resigned. right after the reappointment, yes, he resigned his position. Um, wish him the best. And I know What's he doing now? I believe he is working for Apple. Is that correct, that Ms. Correct. He left us? Yes. Okay. You didn't call me? That's too bad. We all accept? Okay. With that, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries 5 to 0. And if you would enter your votes. Maybe that's the way to do it too, to enter the end. Just clarification though, mm -hmm. when they do vote, it does not come up until I close it. Okay. So you can change your mind. You can change your mind until I close it. Got it. And my screen for them is Uh You know what, it didn't redo it, it voted and it kept it, but it didn't register it until. So I think we'll do this. So here comes the next one. You did early voting. That was goodness. Just can't do absentee here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on to, uh, so, yes, I'm sorry. Uh, our relationship with CF will get these people an AA degree. Correct. We are also working with them on becoming partners as far or as the parent to teacher program as well. Okay. Absolutely. They, they do offer some for your program. So that is correct. So we are working with them once they see the interest, we will complete the process with Mr. Bradshaw's assistance. Okay. So these people could get their, their bachelor's? That is correct from CF as well as St. Leo, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, told us that they're very interested in the program because our program is St. Leo. That so is correct. I, that I think Brendan yes. and Susan's working on them being able to do that also. Can they collect any courses if it was asked I am not aware of that. I will, we will ask CF in St. Leo. I'm not aware of anything. I know other universities offer that, so we'll check with them as well. Good question. Thank you. The next is affiliation. I ask the board's approval on the affiliation agreement between the School Board of Citrus County, Florida and Fordham University. We have one social worker that would like to do her internship with Citrus County. A motion by Mr. Dodd, a second by Ms. Bryant, to approve the affiliation agreement between the Citrus County School Board of Florida and the Fordham Uni uh, University Social Worker Intern Program. Any questions or comments? I think I had a question. I'm not working with paper, so I'm not trying to memory. Um, or should you talk about saving time? Um, there was a, when we put them through the background checks, 
there was something in there that, that a second one um, that they had to pay for uh, their their background check and their fingerprints. That is correct. When we process interns. If they are going, if they are, if they only need to do 20 hours, we wrap them through the schools. But if it's an internship, we process them as substitutes, and they do, they do pay for their fingerprinting and drug testing. They can also substitute on the days they do not have an internship. Okay. And you pay. And then, that is correct. And then I know that you know we fight with our teachers about you got to pay for this, you got to pay for that, and you add this to your certificate and you got to pay for that so is there a way that um, and this is just a question right now that we don't have to answer but can we look at if they actually come on to Citrus County as a teacher can we give them that money back we can look at that we, we can certainly that? absolutely discuss they that as an internship, we don't have to redo it as a teacher they, they don't as long as they remain a substitute and they've been processed they are good to go as, as a teacher, that is correct. Yeah. They would have to be yeah, and see that. We we look at that. We monitor that very closely and encourage them. We call, we reach out to them and encourage them. Anyone that resigns with us or interns, we encourage them to stay on as substitutes until they are offered a position, so they don't have that break in service and have to be re fingerprinted. The cost though is simply what we're being charged. There's no. We're not that is correct. That is correct. That is out of their pocket. So. Right. Yes. It's the same amount of money that we're being charged to yeah. process. So. Okay. Is there a where we can set up something maybe you already have it, where let's say a uh, math teacher from elementary that you desperately need, uh, is there a way to find out what colleges are very strong in that we can go to? We, we, we do do that and we have started posting. It's called Handshake. And it's a program online where we can post positions, where we can see information about the college, where we have that relationship online. So we are doing that with all of the universities in our area, as well as Pennsylvania and Ohio. What's exciting about Handshake, because I helped my son with his own internship that way, is if a school, Pennsylvania University, is um, somebody's looking down here and they say Citrus County, it'll say, um, three people from that university have worked there or and so it, it gives information so you you can feel like oh they know a little bit about our group and our organization it's also gives us a, a lot of information that gets you know about the the potential um, applicant Correct. that is excellent so I mean handshakes a, it's, it's an industry standard that's being used and I think it's a good move. That's all the colleges and universities are going to that. We have registered with all the ones in our area and the, some of the ones that we go to out of state as well to identify those schools. And the student actually logs on from their university login. So it's not like they are joining something as much as they, they get to do all that from within their university and that information gets to go along. Do we have the information of where people are studying? From two citrus county. Yes, we do. We do have that information. We hire a lot from within the state of Florida, but we've also gotten several from out of state as well. A lot. We have our group from Pennsylvania that we hire, um, Ohio, so we can we track that information. Well, we can certainly bring that information to you at next board meeting just for your information purposes. Where all of our new hires came from by state. That would be interesting. Just then we can, if, if a lot are coming from certain states, and we should be there in those states getting more, you know. <coughs> okay. Anything else? All of those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? And if you can unlock the votes and register you. your vote. Thank you. Moving on, um, to a resolution to affirm participation in the small district consortium. Oh, did, I'm sorry, five to zero. I thought I announced it, I'm sorry. Thank you, so, um, Item 7A, a resolution to affirm participation in the small district consortium. Good morning. Good morning. I ask you to approve the resolution affirming the participation in the small district, small school district council consortium. I move to firm participation in the small school district council consortium. Second. 
a motion by Ms. Powers, second by Mr. Don, to approve a resolution affirming participation in the Small School District Council Consortium. Any questions or comments? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries 5-0. Thank you. If you can unlock the votes. <laughs> and I believe, has anybody voted? We're moving on then to attorney legal matters. Oh, no, wait a minute. <laughs> 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 um, Dr. Heber. Thank you. Mr. Bishop? No, sir. Mr. Mullen? No, sir. Mr. Dodd? <laughs> <laughs> Just two things. You go right ahead. One, uh, uh, I asked Liz to send y'all an uh, email reminding about the IV codes yes. coming up. And we usually, all, all of us join it as a parent organization and you can get a check. You make it out to the IV parent organization and I show happily with a small table with them. They very much appreciate it because anytime there's a meeting up on the board, it has school board support. So very pleased. Uh, also went to a mental health meeting last week and it was very productive. I was telling the kid, it was from all different uh, branches of government and, and uh, private industry too, just sitting there and sharing information about mental health. And each of them, they got a plan that they were going to work on and uh, bring more maybe sources in or, or, or new ideas. And had, each of them had an assignment and it, it was very realistic and sometimes you go through these meetings, any kind of meeting, it could be football or whatever, and you think, what are they talking about? You know, well, why are we meeting? But this one was, was one in which, hey, this is right, this is good, we were serious, realistic, doing the job we're supposed to be doing, and I was very, very pleased, and we'll have a, another meeting coming up in a couple of weeks, uh, which I, I believe will be, have the same type of uh, feeling, that, that this, this is good, this, this is uh, workable. So, very much appreciated that, kid, and I know you're talking to someone back there, but that's a good job. Thank you, Ms. Powell. Uh, Ms. Kelsey? The other thing I want to do is brag on the Chronicle because they're doing a lot for um, our educational uh, things. Ernie also got a lot of uh, press for the uh, mm -hmm. Green Science and the Environmental Week. The Environmental Jeopardy games for high school and middle school have already been published. And even a spaghetti dinner in October for Ina Hassan, who's now one of our mm -hmm. protectors. So I think we need to say thank you to the Chronicle for making all those those notices for the general public. So. And I believe the Marine Science Station is even working with any kind of, is it any Hassi? Is that any Hassi? Any Hassi? That. <laughs> um, to, uh, to, to even do some trips um, to the Marine Science Station. So yeah. I think that's wonderful. I have a couple of things. One, I want to talk about board docs because there's a couple of pieces that we need to um, talk about and, and, and may make some uh, decisions on. One, and I know the board, you understand this because you've been wonderful in proving this, but for those maybe that, that need to understand, the reason we're doing this is not to make the board members' lives easier because as <laughs> As they will often contest to, this is act, we are actually we tend to, to operate pretty promptly in our board meetings, so this is going to take a little bit of learning. But the reason we're doing this is because largely the process of building an agenda and getting an item on the agenda hasn't changed in probably the last 20 years, and it, it was because 20 years ago we had it was more labor intensive. We don't have people anymore and so we needed to have a very efficient uh, system that had a lot of checks and balances but that was in the most um, handled in the most prompt manner <coughs> so uh, this is where board docs has come out of and so what we're doing and, and the decisions we're trying to make to to make this very workable have to do with what happens before the agenda gets to us um, with that said um, one of the things, the, the easy one, is I wondered if maybe we could add to the opening exercises the board member who will be 
in responsible for those and that that may just be an extra reminder for us that you know that we could just who's going to be doing it mm -hmm. the biggest thing has to do with the consent agenda the, today we did not have a consent agenda because it was a special board meeting and so the agenda is the agenda but of course like many boards consent agendas are how we can operate um, a number of items that uh, we all agree to and we can agree to in one vote the way we have done consent agendas in the past, everything went on the agenda and then with the automatic polls and then any polls the board members made, everything else then went on the consent agenda. That, the, the overall philosophy won't change, but the system does it differently. It really is more conducive to the automatic polls being assigned to the agenda automatically at the beginning. So in other words, if we would always have the, bu the budget voted on, um, an amendment to the budget voted on, that's an automatic poll, it would go on the permanent agenda. And then everything else would go on the consent agenda. And then the board member would ask to pull an item <coughs> off of the consent agenda. So otherwise, and the reason is because the way Board Docs builds it, it assumes the bulk of the agenda goes on consent. Otherwise, when she has it, she has to, in order to move it to the main agenda, she has to click on every item and add it to the main agenda. That's a lot easier to take the items we pulled than it is to take the reverse of what we do now, which is to take the entire agenda and basically make it a consent. This way, it's a consent until it's made to the agenda. Am I, am I making sense at all? Yes, no. but my question there would be, sure. what is going to be the appearance to the general public that everything is always on consent? I would rather... I'm most of the like, most of the boards, that's how it is. That's, that's how they do it. It's just, it actually is that we've just never done it that way because it didn't make any difference because all she did is cut and paste. The process now is different. But Doug, Doug is correct before in the past year that everything listed. So if I, as a public member, pulled it up, oh my gosh, I got 40 items are going to deal with it. That's, that's what it is out there until we pull up the consent agenda. So it's kind of the opposite, isn't it? We should yeah. be pulling it and put on the consent is what we're doing, actually. I mean, they're all agenda items. I mean, how much extra time does it take to move them? Is this like an hour or five minutes or how long would it take? Well, I honestly can't answer that because I haven't done it yet. Okay. Very honestly, I, I haven't had the need to do that. I mean, to move things, it just depends. Um, what what I've seen other counties do is that they have a blurb, you know, a little blurb about what the consent agenda is and how they are all voted on. Because um, uh, next to the, if you would go back and look at your agenda, next to them it would say, um, it would say actually consent on it as far as action consent. And so then, um, I mean, I can move them. It's not an issue. It's just. Uh, and here's one of the you no, know, and, and I and I totally because I thought the same thing. So here's one know. of the things though that is hard to 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 see without entirely seeing it. When you, if I'm a, a member of the public and I go and see the agenda the day it's published and made live, seven days before. If we don't do put everything on the consent, other than the automatic polls, if I go back to the agenda for today, or even as a board member, if we go back, now when she puts it, it's all over the place, because now it goes back into its original, what would have been its original place. So instead of saying, now where was that? Well, it would have been in consent, and that was pulled onto the item, so now it's very obvious we're going to have it for discussion. If you were looking at it as a member of the public, everything's on consent, but you actually know it's on consent. You wouldn't entirely, the other way, everything moves to consent, but you, if you said, okay, what was that item they were gonna vote on that I had an issue with? You'd have to go and search for it under consent and it would be nowhere where it had initially been. So it's actually, it actually becomes more difficult to find the item when you do it from putting it on the agenda and then putting into consent because it actually gets kind of more buried um, in it. I, I'm kind of lost on that. That's okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm a little lost. So, so when you look at the agenda now and the item numbers and, and 
if we were on, uh, so if you looked at like 10A, if for some reason 10A became a consent item, it would now go into consent and it would be, it would not, it would not be typically 10A, it would be 10A on consent. So you do have to look for a different area. So if you were looking for the agenda item, <coughs> it's gonna be in a different place at the board meeting than it will on the, day, on the agenda, the original agenda. Um, at least when we looked at it, that's what we found. There, well, there's, I've done some research and there are some that have it all, they'll have like um, finance, Mike Mullen, and then it'll say consent and you can keep them all under that. But you would have two different, it, yeah, it's just, it's gonna be. Well, I just, I, I want the perception would be that, you know, we may, if nobody wants to discuss it, it goes on consent. Now, if we do it this other way, which I understand, if it's all on consent, mm -hmm. and then we pull it, then it should show who pulled it. Now, I know, I've seen the, uh, I believe it's the county commission, it shows who pulls an item for discussion. So we'll have their name by it. Mm -hmm. So is that what's going to happen here? Uh, that I have not seen that. Yeah, I don't, I, think, I don't think board docs, they don't use board docs. They use a different product. So it, but will it show who pulls the, the item and at what time, if, so if it's all on consent and I want to pull an item um, and I go in there and pull it, are you, all of you going to be able to see that I pulled it or am I going to see if Sandy pulls something or prior to the meeting or? Usually the chair is informed when somebody pulls something. Right. Anyway, at least that's been our practice for years. I mean, years. it doesn't, we, when we had the hard copies, you no, know, you, it what didn't say who made who pulled those particular items. A lot the of other way that we could do it is, and I spoke with Mr. Bradshaw, um, was to when keep it as it is, you know, and then I can um, make a category. If you notice the black, I, I'm not sure how you see it, but the the um, those are the categories like finance, you know, to right. any other. I can make that a category that says consent agenda, and that can be I can move things all up into that consent agenda category and then the next item would be to uh, um, approve the consent agenda. Is that right? That's right. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. So we can do it that way and see if that works in th for the next meeting. It's kind of like what the agendas are now. Yes, it was, the, it was the process that I think right. the concern so can, was the, the, the amount of work on it. For the September 10th board meeting. Okay, well let's do that then. And then what about the time you're moving to time when we get, receive the agenda? What is the time frame for an item to be pulled off consent? And it would be the same. Noon. You have the day before the meeting, so then that Monday until noon. So once okay. I know that everything else what goes on consent, I can change that to a, a, a consent action and then move those up. And then just the items that were pulled will show under the other uh, categories, as they do, as our original paper agenda. Okay. So. Yep. So, and Mr. Kenny, I mean, I'm, I'm excited about this. No, and, and Mr. Don, you've been a, a big help with this. So I, and I, 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 I'm struggling with that same thing. I'm, so I, I, I totally get it. I just, um, it's this balance of this. How do we, we keep the traditions and the, and the transparency that we have and then right. merit. And it's, it's, it's a work in progress. So I've. And now, and since you <coughs> brought up the board docs, um, so when the request for school board agenda items that staff fills out, it's going to be consistent, which I'm very I'm glad about that. But is there some training or I mean, what's going on in that area? As Dr. Far Hebert, as do you want to make process? Because I think it's been exciting what you've been doing behind the scenes. I mean, just just look at, at, Ms., at our, Mr. Mullen and Mr. Uh, Bishop there. You know, I, I see tablets and laptops and ongoing, <laughs> ongoing training we um, we did provide training to staff and um, Miss Adele did create a, um, a PowerPoint um, with directions for staff when they're filling out all of the information and, and what to do and then Miss Adele has met with individual in, um, folks that need support in how to go about the process so we've had ongoing conversations with staff um, Mr. Don on how to do this and we really haven't had um, I mean, I've got staff here that has gone through um, and actually worked through the process very well. So if, if someone inadvertently leaves out the financial implications, yes. somebody's going to catch that before it gets posted right. to the board, right? I'm, I'm going to give an example. We had our student progression plan, I'm going to excuse Ms. Mrs. Kaler for this, um, that was submitted to Mrs. Kaler. She had a chance to review it. When she looked at it, she realized there were some things not correct in it. 
So she, what we did, rejected it, which is an electronic button. She rejected it, got sent back to the secretary. The secretary, Ms. Bodecker, then went and made some changes and adjustments, then resubmitted to Mrs. Kaler. Then it ended up coming to me, and then it went to um, Ms. Wilson, and then up the chain. And you can follow, like I can see, I saw that it was rejected. Now it doesn't say why, like what the issue was, but you can see the kind of the chain of how it works. So it's actually been great. Ms. Adele's able to say, listen, I see some items are sitting here, and so she can call that person and say, listen, we're waiting on a few items to be um, processed before the board meeting, and then kind of help remind them. But emails are sent, so when somebody sends a board agenda request, I get an email saying go into board docs and do that. So it's been very seamless. And there is still a, an approval, like someone signs okay. off on these, these yes. right? Okay. It's in the past, um, we used um, a system where you had to drag a signature over and drop it on and then save that document and then re-email back. Here you go in, you, you review it, and then there's a box. You just click on this box and check marks, but then at the bottom it'll say approved by Scott Hebert. So you'll be able to see who then approved it, but it won't go any for, further from me until I do that. And then when it gets to Mrs. Wilson and she looks at the financial impact, she send, approves it and then it goes to Lisa. So you can see all the steps along the way of who's approved it and reviewed it. It is exciting. The other piece that, that is being worked on is going to be the policy piece because um, right now um, we it's difficult to sometimes search our own policies and the other aspect is if, <laughs> yes, Mr. Bradshaw had a few choice words <laughs> on, on that. Um, and, I, and I think we, we all recognize that with board docs, that part will be improved. Also, when we're developing new policies, we have then the ability, of course, to search and find out what other districts are doing, not just in Florida, but around the country. And that helps us, I think, build better policies. So that that's, we've been hoping that Florida School Board Association would have a policy uh, bank, and this is, is really the next best thing, if not even better than that. So, And Mr. Dixon is working on the policy right now. He and his staff are, are working through that because they have to work with board docs to get everything converted into their format. And then, as Mr. Kennedy said, then it would be much easier to navigate and search. If you want to look for a piece of policy, type it in and be able to quickly find what you need, which is much easier than our current policy manual. And this program is going to better serve the public because they're going to be able to go online and click on um, a item number and actually this will work out where they'll be able to click on it and it'll come up to the video. Isn't that why we're timing the video? The video, I'm not sure that we're to that point yet, but one thing like right now, if somebody tuned into the video and wanted to know where we were in the meeting, they can go to the scoreboard piece and it'll tell them we're right now at item A, other business, um, and they would know what part of the meeting they're on. Previous to that, they, they did not have that. The time stamping is another piece of it, and we're, that we has to, to do work, with the audio visual. We, we have to work on some equipment upgrades and uh, video upgrades, and then once that happens, when the meeting is closed, Ms. Adele will be able to go in and, and put the time stamps and then be able to follow that. But I, I will say with the board policy, to go back to that piece, the nice, once you all, we get into some board policies, they'll be able to track it. So let's say someone looks up a board policy, they can say, here's what Citrus County did, and on this date they discussed it, on this date they um, approved it, here's when it went into past. And you'll be able to follow that from this point forward. We're not going backwards, we're just going to go from this point sure. forward. But it'll, it'll, it has some great robust qualities. But I'm excited the piece we're able to get moving on it today. So yeah, I think so it's been very positive. And we're going to be doing student progression plan. That's another piece of that that will we'll go in, be able to go into it as well. And again, that's I think is going to just continue to improve. That Mrs. Process. Kaler and I have already been talking about how the student progression plan will be part of the board docs process. So she's very eager to work with that and, and make that a part of how we move forward this coming year. Again, not what we've done, but starting this new school year. Thank you. Yes. On the consent agenda, when we have the donations that we have, and you always read out, who paid the donations, you're still going to Yes, and that's actually its own line item. Good. Because <laughs> I, I completely agree, Ms. Powers. <laughs> um, the other thing I just want to go over uh, briefly with you is a reminder that um, uh, of a couple of meetings. One is on September 12th, 
Um, Florida School Board Association has their legislative committee platform meeting. I unfortunately have a prior engagement and am not able to attend. And Ms. Powers, who is our um, alternate, has so graciously um, changed her schedule so that she could represent us. Um, following the incident at IPS, I had uh, immediately contacted the Florida School Board Association about adding to the platform um, an effort similar to, to what Mr. Dodd has, uh, is looking at with uh, the Sona. Some of those. Yeah, thank you. Um, the, the issue, and, and I don't know how specifically how you all are, are doing it, but on our platform, what was suggested, the language, is that, um, that in Florida Statute 8, uh, 83, 863.10, that it's added <coughs> to include for a person to express publicly a verbal threat to conduct a mass shooting or act of terrorism. Um, I'm sure there'll be somebody who will still wordsmith us, but, but I think that's the essence, I think, of what we're talking about. I think, Mr. Dodd, that was similar to what you had, had uh, indicated as well as that, so that there was more indication of that. Does that, that look correct? That's, yeah, that's, I mean, that's the, the contention there, that verbal threats are just as serious as a written or electronically communicated mm -hmm. threat. Mm -hmm. and, we, and we take them just as serious, but it's more than just saying, um, oh, we can document it in a report and then call the school that we've had this verbal threat to shoot up the school and then the decision that we make is to notify everyone and then <coughs> what's what are we doing well exactly. we're gonna, no trespass the first thing okay what else well uh, that's it right now that's it. you know so those are at least it'll give an option at least there'll be the ability to make a criminal case to take a criminal action um, and that's what i think that the commission, I hope, I mean, is going to be a discussion. There have been several other incidents, and we look at these postings or leaving a note here or passing a note, and it's written, and it's a felony. Um, and yet, when someone makes a verbal threat uh, to commit a mass homicide or to a law enforcement officer, I mean, <laughs> a verbal threat, then there needs to be the option for yeah. criminal action. I, I agree. Um, I was very excited that the Florida School Board Association's feedback that I'm hearing was extremely positive. They immediately wanted to uh, work with us to add that because it was an after-platform request, um, but they accommodated us on that, and so uh, so that is moving uh, forward. The other um, things that um, that we've we've talked about is trying to provide more opportunities for career technical education with regards to alternatives to our state standardized testing. And so um, I've provided um, some of the information um, to that, to FSBA um, in that. Following that adoption, what will happen is that typically will be adopted by the committee that day. It is a process very similar to a legislative type process. The committee will meet, there will be voting that takes place, there'll be amendments that are offered, and then the, uh, the platform is established, and then that, that platform is what is sent to the Board of Directors for final approval. And that's the meeting that Ms. Powers is going to go to? Ms. Powers will go to the platform development um, and that is, where is that going to be, in Orlando, or is that going to be Tallahassee? It's actually in Kissimmee, um, to, I mean Orlando, Kissimmee. Yeah. Um, the our current FSBA president, it'll be at right. Uh, that's yeah. So they, they they tend to do it there. Is it Osceola? Osceola. Osceola. Yeah. Um, I forget Osceola is. The, I mean, Kissimmee is Osceola. I keep thinking it's Orlando or the, or Orange County. That's right. Um, so that that will take place, and then on September 23rd, and I'll, I was going to get with the superintendent on this. We have the Citrus Legislative Delegation. Uh, session and where again I thought we would um, we, we have time at our next board meeting but I think those are some items where this particular item should also be included in our list of items that we publicly ask for uh, from our legislators for there to be the addition of that I think both have expressed um, a desire to to improve that legislation of a verbal threat yeah. so I think that's something we should uh, could look to if we're all in agreement to add as well. 
and that well, <coughs> that's Doug, I'll ask this of you. Uh, falling under that doesn't come, say, a ginger drop soup or a personal soup. She's going to just kill it. You know? That, you know, yeah, like I we've always said our whole lives, so I could just shoot that in. That doesn't come under, it has to be a serious a credible threat. threat. That's a credible threat. Yeah. Yes. There's um, something here I'm really looking real quick to um, to add. There is a proposal that I am encouraged about that um, that's also being uh, put forward on FSBA. It is to amend Florida Statute um, 1003.621 to say, uh, to enable any school district, rather than only academically high-performing school districts, to be eligible for flexibility in meeting certain requirements in Florida statute and the rules of public education, I mean, and the rules of the State Board of Education. This is an effort for Florida School Board Association to say, why can't we appeal to the state to have opportunities that, for example, charter schools may have? So, for example, um, there are requirements that we're dealing with right now uh, that our staff are required to do that the charters may be exempt from. And that may allow them a opportunity to spend more time with students or to, uh, to accomplish different things. This isn't a carte, a carte blanche. We would have to come up with a plan to say, okay, if we did or didn't do X, we would be able to achieve X. And then they would have to approve that plan, the State Board of Education. But Florida School Board Association's position is, let's give our traditional public schools some opportunities to be successful by providing some um, creative ways of operating. And I think it's a, it's a very appropriate approach, um, and the idea is to try and provide us some of the flexibilities that, that charters may have. One of the things FSBA is careful to sometimes say is, be careful what we wish for. Because sometimes it sounds, oh, well, that's great. You don't have to do that. Well, maybe we do we feel we need to do that. Or maybe uh, that, that them doing that also puts a burden on them that we we are exempt from. So it is that, be careful what you wish for. So I don't know if you have any thoughts for that, but I wanted to share that with you because that's kind of out there. With that, um, I don't have anything more. What we need to do, oh, Mr. Dodd. Yes, and I just was thinking about this um, so that we can be trained back to the board docs. Like if we have an area to make comments, because right now you know, I turn all my stuff in after the meeting. Um, so. Um, how are we going to work that with notes or with if we do make some questions that we can come back and reference it? Or, or, and there's, a, there's an ability to type in our notes now, correct? There's a note area there. There's two okay. things that right. uh, you'll see. It's, there's a little like um, cloud button so you yes. can make an annotation. So I can make an annotation here. Now, is this... Um, does this become public record on my annotation or not? No. no. I think it's it's, it, it's got to be requested. Um, Mr. Bradshaw, isn't that still somewhat up for debate? Well, you can type if on he it. Made, if he makes a, a personal note regarding something, that's, I know, been argued at. There's a, there's a whole bunch of case law on public records and personal notes. If you're making personal notes that are only for your own, <coughs> to remind you of things, that is not a public record. Okay. No, but um, if you um, um, transmit that to other people, then it becomes a public record. Okay. Um, does that make sense? Yes, yeah, so if I share. were to make a note to s s uh, make sure I check on this, um, you oh, know, not a public record. At, but when I type it in here, do people have access to it or is it just me? That I don't know. No, there's no, nobody can see that, but you do have the option to print it if you wanted to print it. Okay, but I could come back to it and reference Correct. it. Correct. Until you delete it, it's there. Now, there's a, a second piece to that, though, Mr. Dodd. If you, for example, download one of the PDF supplemental yes. pieces, yes. and and I do this regularly where I will highlight and make notes within yes. Adobe Editor, um, I save those. Now, whether it, I, I mean, I know 
if I got requested, I'd still be calling Mr. Bradshaw, but my intent is usually that it, it's still questionable that, that that could be a public record because it's, it's yeah. I've created that. Well, generally that's not going to be a public record if you don't share it. But I'm going to say, if it's a note where I say, bring up to the board this, it... That's, that's probably not a public record. Okay. But if you write you down, but if you write down something that, and then you know, a note that says, "Lisa, please make sure that this gets done or reviewed or whatever," that that's is, that is a public record because you're because you're going to you're, you're transmitting that over. You can't release a document with that in it, then that probably becomes a public record. But if you make a note that says. I need to ask Lisa to do this, or I need to talk to you know Ms. Moore, Mr. Bradshaw, whoever about this to get some clarification. That's generally that's a part of it. Okay. Because your own personal notes are not a public record. Mr. Dodd, does that help? Right. So I think clears money. And, and I can follow. <laughs> no, no, it helps. And I can that, follow. And, and so I can make an interrupt. There. But those are the kind of like that's the you know there's a bunch of law on that as far as when they become public records and when they sure. don't become public records. Right. Generally, it is associated with becoming public when you start sharing that information. But if one of us at the end of the meeting either emails to Lisa or says, here, take this, now it's valid, will be created as a public record. At least that's my, that was mine. Okay. And so if I make an annotation here on this item and then I want to come back Will I be able to find those notes later, or what? What right. will I? Because if you make an annotation there and you save it, and you'll see if you pull it up, close and that, or print. Just hit the. If there's a little check mark. Yes. You'll hit that check mark, and that will save it. Okay. And it will turn yellow. Okay. The little cloud will turn yellow. So then, when you go to that particular right. um, category or All item, right. it will be yellow, and you'll know that you have a note there. So, like Mr. Kennedy, if we're going over this and we want to make sure we cover that. On this agenda item, mm -hmm. do that, and it would highlight and show that we made a note. So you just have to pull, open that up, okay. and you can see what your note is, and then if you're through with it, you can there's a, a, a you can delete it. Yeah, and that's what I was just doing with these as well. Okay, that's good. I like that. <coughs> Thank you. Okay. Okay. Um, now the part I hate to do to everybody, but we have to call a executive or a closed session. We're going to adjourn. So we're going to adjourn, and we are um, calling an executive session. So that means um, only it's going to be bargaining will be able to remain in the room. And I don't believe they said this is going to be very long. So we will adjourn. And if you would turn off your microphone.